Hello, it's me again. <laughs> All right, um, it's my privilege that Len has asked me not to preach today. Um, <laughs> um, instead, he uh, assigned Wally. Wally, come here. Okay. Wally is a PhD student in electrical engineering at Colorado School of Mines. Um, this is your no, my fourth year. Fourth year. Okay, um, so I asked Wally, hey Wally, what is your first time impression when you came to the church? Well, he said, um, I felt welcome at First Baptist. And even before he came to the U.S., um, our prayer group, at the time Tunde was still here, if you remember Tunde from Nigeria. So he led the prayer group that, to pray for Wally to arrive here uh, in Golden Safely. So here it is, Wally. Oh, well, by the way, do you know Wally's uh, full name? Okay, let me, let, let's repeat you after sure me, you okay? Can try that? <laughs> Ade Wally? Ade Kola? Ayo Ade. Yeah, there you go. Um, I know, uh, I'd like you to join me to sing the song, um, which you, I'm pretty sure you, you do know. Um, He's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take it have his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know to set the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust in more. Amen. It's wonderful to trust God. Um, I bring greetings from uh, Nigeria, uh, to be more specific, uh, Ogun State. And um, the shirt I'm wearing is actually is, is like a, um, is a is a dye that is made just from that part of the, uh, of the country. So if you see this, it means it's from Abel Kuda. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't need to try and pronounce that. Um, but yeah, I want to... Um, I'm so happy to be here, um, and um, I want to take, thank the leadership of this house for the privilege to actually stand before you. I want to thank Pastor Len. He's been a great uh, mentor to me, uh, and thank you for coming. Uh, <laughs> um, let's pray. Our God, our Father, we thank you for today. We thank you. Because your word never fails. We thank you for your word is true. And you said your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, I pray that your word will meet us each at the point of our needs today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Do I have any consultants in the house? Consultant. Well, you may be a doctor, you could be a... Um, I mean, you consult for people. Consult. Well, you might have to. Well, I will try to pronounce. Well, <laughs> yeah, consult. Um, anyone? Okay, if you do business. Okay. So if I ask you, and um, what happens when your client doesn't trust you? How do you feel? Probably not hired. <laughs> yep. I mean, what about parents? How do you feel when your kids don't trust you? I think that is, uh, that is not so good. I mean, one of the dreadful things I ever heard from my dad when I was young, at the point, he said, I don't trust you. And that was like the end of the day for me. Um, 
friends? I mean, how do you feel when um, somebody asks you or tells you that I don't trust you? You could feel the, um, um, the gravity. But here's the thing. Many a times when things happen and we don't get to turn the table around, we do not know exactly how it is when you do something. But here's the next question I'm going to ask you. How do you think God feels when he is not trusted? Yep. God is sad. God is not happy. I'm not blessed. <laughs> but this is one thing God wants to fix today. In your heart, in my heart, he wants to change the position, the way we look at him, and the way um, he blesses us. God wants to walk in our hearts. He wants us to enjoy the peace, the direction. He wants us to enjoy the confidence that actually comes when we put all our trust in him. He wants to set us free. I don't know how you came here, but I want you to be very expectant today. Because in Hebrews 11, 6 b it says, For they that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So be expectant. Because God is wanting to set you free. He's wanting you to leave this door, being free from every form of uh, whatever it is you can call it or name it. Uh, this message is titled, The Beauty in Trusting God. Um, so, as we look at these things, uh, we'll be going over three questions. So God will be asking us three questions um, such a way that he is able to take us from where we are into this glorious walk um, with him. Where we get to enjoy this fullness that we are talking about. He wants to change our position such a way that we have the right level of trust. Trust. And the first question is, where am I in my trust level? I mean, if you want to solve a problem, the first thing is you have to identify the problem. And then we'll go on next to ask the next question. Oh, before we move on, we'll try to identify and know what exactly is the right level of trust. Because when we know that, then we know in comparison, what my level of trust is with him. So we'll, we'll then go ahead and see how do we operate in this right level of trust. And then the sermon will be concluded. When you see this, last question, know that we are about ending. How does this right level of trust, how does he unveil his beauty in my life? How does he show out? How is, been, how is it displayed? that the whole world may see. So let's go back and then answer the first question, which is, where am I in my trust level? So one more question. Um, I love asking questions. Um, <laughs> so um, when last did you rely on God for anything? Uh, was that just this morning? Or was that yesterday? Or was that maybe 20 years ago? Um, maybe you are too rich. Uh, or maybe you, you've thought that you have everything under control. But another way to look at it is this. Maybe there is actually something wrong with what. I really believe. Maybe there's something wrong with what you really believe. Because until we identify what we actually believe, there's no way to move on. I want you to take a moment at this time and 
think of a present challenge or a situation in your life. You've tried everything. I want you to just bring that to your thoughts right now. Bring it in. Bring it in. Um, and then ask yourself this second, well, another question. What do you think of God in this situation that you are in right now? What do you think of him? Do you think you can rely on him? I mean, is he like a sometimes reliable God? Do you think that he's reliable, but he's just too slow? I need it fast. Um, I mean, I can relate to that very well. I love it being fast. And uh, you get on to think that even when you pray or you ask God, you don't know what he's going to say, so you think he's too risky. Um, or maybe yours is that he's not unwilling. He's, he doesn't, he, he's just, he doesn't care. Um, so any of these things, check it out. Is this what I'm actually thinking in this situation? As God walk in our hearts, we will be staying at Proverbs 3, 5 or 6. This is a very popular verse. You may have heard several times, but um, we'll spend a little bit of time just going through it, chewing it. I mean, you know, the, um, if I remember my biology well, uh, say this is it. Um, they have like four compartments, right? They chew. The, I mean, when they say animal chew cord, you throw it out, you bring it in, you chew. Yeah, so we will be doing exactly that. <laughs> um, so you can grab your Bible, uh, but I'll be reading just from uh, NIV. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your paths straight. Um, the first one, five, five a, it says, "Trust in the Lord with all your hearts." I mean, why would God tell me or tell us to trust Him with everything if He's not going to help? Well, I don't want to be that kind of a dad that would tell his son, I have a birthday gift for you when he has no plan to do that. Um, I mean, it's going to be as if God is frustrating us, right? If he says this and if this is not true. But thanks be to God Almighty because this is true. He does not want us just to trust him and he won't show up. But he actually wants us to trust him because he will always show up. So if we must trust him with all our hearts, we must believe that our God is always reliable. He is always full of truth and that he will always show up whenever we call on him. So think again. Think of that challenge again. Think of that situation again. Is this your belief? Are you ready to become one with him through that challenge? Are you ready to become one with him as you walk and as you take each steps of your life? I, was, I read an article by Henry Morris IV uh, on faith versus trust. And um, he actually talked about the story of Blodin, which I'm very sure a lot of you are familiar with. You know Blodin? Okay, so Blodin is this famous um, tightrope walker. You know, those guys that walk on rope like this. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> um, so 
Um, so he had to cross, um, walk over the Niagara Falls. Um, but hear this story. So I'm going to read this for you. Uh, he said, over several weeks, he said, Blodin walked backward, huh. blindfolded, backflipped, pushed a wheelbarrow, and even cooked an omelet during one of many trips across the rope. He had faith he could accomplish these feats, but he also trusted his abilities to complete them. The spectators, on the other hand, only had faith. A difference seen in Blodin's daring walk in August 1859. After he had crossed to the Canadian side, the crowd was horrified as Blodin reappeared on the rope with his manager, Ari Colcott, clinging to his back. Imagine that. <laughs> A few guys' ropes snapped during their transit. Wow, I'm, I think I'm already getting um, butterflies in my stomach right away. <laughs> um, but Blodin never wavered and safely made the crossing. So it was later reported that Blodin told his manager, so take a breath, let's look at this. He says, look up, Ari. You are no longer Concord. You are Blodin. Until I clear this place, be part of me, mind, body, and soul. If I swear, you have to swear with me. Do not attempt to do any balancing yourself. As I walk through the tightrope of life, you get. But thank God I'm not walking alone. As I walk through the tightrope of life with Jesus, I stop doing the balancing. Instead, I become one with Him as He does the balancing. As it takes me through. For I have become one with him in everything. So if we're going to live this kind of life, there is something we have to know, and that is that we have the right level of trust, which is again to believe that our God is always reliable, always full of truth, and he will always show up whenever we call on him. I want that to be ringing in your heart over and over. He is always reliable, always full of truth, and that he will always show up whenever we call on him. Think of that challenge again. Are you ready to become one with him? Now that we, we now I mean we've just answered one question, we now know what the right level of trust is, which is what is on the screen right there. The next thing is, how then do we operate in this right level of trust? Because operating or trust as as it is, it's not just believing. Trust involves action. If you don't do anything, you don't trust. Until the manager got into the wheelbarrow onto his back, he doesn't trust them. Until you cling to Jesus, you don't trust them. In Proverbs 3, 5b, as we get to answer look at how we operate in this right level of trust. Um, it says, lean not on your own understanding. Um, there's this famous pastor in Nigeria. He says, um, he's always like, um, he's like a radical pastor. And he says that some Christians tend to remove their brains when they get to church. Um, that's not what this pastor is. I mean, that's not what this is saying. It's not telling us to stop thinking. No, it's not. It's not telling us to stop getting knowledge because even if you read the whole of Proverbs, you discover that we need to have more knowledge. Say, so my people perish for lack of wisdom. So it's not saying we should stop thinking. But here what it is saying. It is 
bringing to our attention that our understanding is still evolving. Our understanding is incomplete. We have to just lean on him. I mean, this is wisdom, right? Do I build Dr. Simon, right? Yeah. Do I build a house on uh, a ground that is still, how do you call it, that has a fault, right? Or something like that. No, I don't. If, if there's still some movement over the place, you don't build there. So God is giving us wisdom right here. Not to lean on our understanding because it is incomplete. You remember Peter, right? In Matthew 14, 22 to 33, Peter was so excited when he saw Jesus uh, walking on water. At that point in time, he had a different understanding. The understanding that Jesus is able. And yes, he is able because um, Jesus told him to come and he actually put his step on the water. But thank God he didn't sink, right? He kept walking. But as he kept walking, and then he turned his eyes away from Jesus and he looked onto the boisterous wind. It says that Peter began to th- sink. At that point in time, he changed his understanding from looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He turned it looking onto the boisterous wind and he began to sink. He had to call for help. Jesus, help me. And thank God, he always helped. And you think you're very smart. Maybe let's go a little bit. Let's see if you're smart enough, that you're smarter than God. Uh, Let's go ahead and see Isaiah 40. Uh, As I read from 28 to 31, it says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Said he would not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Said he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Said they will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary said they will walk and not be faint. He didn't talk about those who are young will renew their strength. No. He didn't talk of age. He didn't talk about your level in life. But he says that those who hope in the Lord he says they won't fly like the birds. You know the way, you know, birds, uh, they struggle with the wings. I mean, they struggle with the wind. Uh, they beat against the wind. But he said they will swell like the eagles. You know how the eagles live? They actually go to the top and then they ride upon the winds. You ride upon the challenge. You ride upon that difficult situation. We are asked to submit our understanding to his understanding. That is what that passage is saying. Whatever understanding you've got, whatever it is, he wants you to submit it. That's one of the ways to operate. Submit your understanding to his understanding. Um, I'll tell you one story. Um, So there was this time I, I woke up early in the morning. And I had this homework that was due. And uh, so that, that used to be my normal, uh, my normal uh, quiet time period. And I stood up and I started walking. And God was letting me know, you need to go and do your quiet time. And I said, oh, no, this homework is due. I got to finish it. 
So I spent the first hour trying to solve the question. No idea. I spent the next hour trying to solve it. Well, I'm like, well, I think I have to give up. So I went back and actually did my quiet time. And then I went back to the homework. And as I went back, I could hear the voice saying to me, divide equations into two. Solve this, solve this, bring it together. And less than in minutes, I solved the question. <laughs> we need to submit our understanding to his understanding. <laughs> so how else can we operate in the right level of trust? Uh, it is that in all our ways, submit to him. In all your ways, submit to him. In some parts, I mean, in other translations, it says that in your, all your ways, acknowledge him. In some places, it says, seek his will in all that you do. I love when I wake up in the morning, and when I get up and I dance before God, you praise God. Um, I mean, it's not that I don't love exercise, but I enjoy uh, dancing before God. We need to be ready to obey him at all times. We need to praise him at every moment. I mean, if you are a parent and you are talking to your child and he's not listening, do you keep talking? Well, it depends on the age of the child, right? Is that how you smack him? <laughs> or, or you stop wasting your breath, right? And I say, well, he will get it. Um, same with God. His words are powerful. So he doesn't just speak. He needs to know that you will obey him when he speaks. We need to seek God's will daily in every situation. I mean, this is something that is going a cake in our age. Or maybe you think you have everything. Or you, you're so strong enough. But that does not stop you from still asking for help. Um, if you go to Joshua 7, you remember the story of uh, Joshua, right? While they have just finished defeating the, the Jericho. They have just seen a whole wall fall down. Israelites have just defied, uh, defeated this big and uh, powerful country. So they thought, oh, the next one, the next, the next um, war they went to, which is against this small little uh, town called Ai. They thought they could just go in their own power. You know what happened? They had to flee from this uh, small little town because they forgot something. They forgot to seek God before going in. So I don't care what you have or what your experiences are. God wants you to seek Him in every way, in every situation. Okay, here's the thing. So you begin to know that I'm about to round up. As I begin to round up, so we have talked about two things, right? We've talked about, um, we've identified what the right level of trust is. And we have talked about how we trust him with everything and trust him in every situation. So the next question is, so what is in for me, right? That's always the if I do this, okay, so what is for me? What is the result? How does this right level of trust, how does it unveil its beauty in my life? It says, and you will make your paths straight. That's Proverbs 3, 6b. So in this situation, 
Actually, it's not left for you anymore to worry. This is where I hand off, and this is where I follow. For God will always do his own part. He never fails. In Jeremiah 10, verse 23, it says that, Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. The first day I saw this verse, I was pretty afraid. But praise God, who does direct our steps then? We just learned it said, He will make our paths straight. In Psalms 23, verse 4, it says, Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. You live a life that is marked with peace and confidence. Shame becomes an history. Because in Psalms 22, verse 5b, it says, In you they trusted, and they were not put to shame. We need to become unmovable. Because in Psalms 125, verse 1, it said, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. We come into a situation, we come into a state of life where circumstances stop defining us. Instead, we move from self-confidence. We move from the confidence in, the, in ourselves, from whatever it is we've built on over the years. But we move into confidence in God. This is hard. And over the years, God has walked him back and forth trying to get this done. And I keep like, pushing him. But the good thing is this. When we trust God, we are backed up by every resources from above. I remember when I was about coming here, I mean, I had a good job. Yeah, very well paying job. But I had to go study. And not in my country. I have to go study in a different country. When I only have school fees for just one semester. <laughs> so it was moving from certainty to uncertainty. But thanks to God, because wherever he leads, he supports I mean, I'm still here today, right? <laughs> so that, that, that kind of like concludes um, whatever I just said. Um, <laughs> um, as I begin to conclude, I mean conclude now. Um, <laughs> it is hard to trust someone you don't know, right? I mean, how do I trust Someone I've never seen driving before, right? Especially when he does not have a driver's license. Uh, I'm not, I won't sit down in that car. Have you just heard about God? Do you know him? Because if you don't know him, there is no way you can trust him. Um... And for us people that have known him for years, but it's getting to a point where we are getting to slip away. I'm going to tell you a little bit story of myself. Um, I mean, if you have a, a, a point in your life that you're still holding back from God, this might give you a little bit um, clue. Leaving college, I thought I knew everything. I had pastored in some gatherings. I had led several Christians who have done several things. I had seen God in several ways in my life. I knew him, and I still know him personally. But when challenges of life showed up, my trust level was actually revealed. 
I discovered that I didn't hand everything over to him. But I didn't know that time. I went unknowingly into what you, I mean, you call depression. My life got filled with all sort of lustful pleasures. I watched TV excessively, including pornography and all those things. And I used work to cope. So I worked a lot. I became tired of church. But there's one thing I remember. That if I leave church, then I'm gone forever. So I decided to stay. Because you don't leave your hospital. You stay in there. The scriptures in my heart were replaced with fantasies of life. I knew I was in serious trouble, but didn't know how to get out. I confided in two of my friends. I fasted from TV, but it decreased over time, but there were still traces left. I knew it was not all gone. I was still a little bit afraid. I was asked like last day about, oh, do I come talk? And I told God, I said, I need my total deliverance. I need my total freedom. Because Jesus preached what he did. But that meant I have to put my total trust in him. And one morning I woke up. But this time around I stood up. And I quoted his word back to him. Every word that was pertaining to my situation. I told him back to him. And that was the end. The same way I knew I wasn't free. The same way I know that I'm free. For I can say that the life that trusts God is a life that enjoys unexplainable freedom, peace, and confidence. So I have one challenge for you today. I don't know what exactly it is that you have. Think of that situation again. Think of a scripture. Think of a word. And say those words back to him. Because he honors his word even more than his name. And in Psalm 62 verse 5. Rejoice in expectation. For my soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. Amen forevermore. Let's pray. Our God, our Father, we thank you for this wonderful time. And we thank you for this wonderful privilege. I thank you, O oh God, for your word. Because when we put all our faith in you, we walk in that confidence and that freedom that only you can provide. Father, we thank you that as we go, that you will walk in our hearts and you will change our positions until we'll come to know you fully. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen.